six and eight. Indiana's Hoosiers are eight and six. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell. An important game for both teams. The leader for this Indiana team, Brian Evans, the Big Ten's leading scorer. Not only the leading scorer, but I think maybe not the best player in the Big Ten, but obviously the most valuable player to his team. All right, time now for the Coquilin fueling factors. For Indiana, they've got to stop penetration. Kawan Garris is back for Illinois. They're playing very, very well. He likes to penetrate, dish out for that three-pointer they took. 34 three-pointers in their last game against Iowa. And Indiana, they must take advantage of their big size inside. Todd Lindemann, a big game against Purdue. He needs another one tonight. Coquilin's quality fuels have additives that prevent fuel line freeze-ups and make your car start quickly. Coquilin, over 57 years of family pride, makes a difference. And now let's go to Mike Goldberg and Doug Altenberger. Well, thank you guys. You know, they just talked about a moment ago, the NCAA tournament picture. Four games left for the Fighting Illini. They need to win three to guarantee themselves a spot. Lots of motivation with Lou Henson announcing his retirement. Lots of motivation, Doug, for Richard Keen, the lone senior. Yeah, when you're a senior, you want to end up on a good note. I wouldn't be surprised to see Richard come out with a lot of emotion this year. I mean, the last three games here and try to you know, get his team going and get him in the tournament. Well, the guys also touched on the injury situation. Kiwan Garris did not play in meeting number one between these two teams. Jerry Hester probably will not play a lot, if at all, tonight. So we'll watch for Jerry Hester. He has not practiced since hurting the ankle against Ohio State. That's the story. We are set for the tap here from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Lou Henson's final trip to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. The Papa John starting lineups. Let's take a look at Illinois. Kawan Garris, obviously their key player, a guy that did not play earlier in the year against Indiana. He had a, had a problem with his shoulder. Very, very important. A great player. Richard Keene, a guy who hit six three-pointers, took 12 in his last game. Jerry Gee inside. Not a very big team. You can see for Indiana, Charlie Miller and Neil Reed will be at the guards along with Todd Lindman, who had a big game against Purdue on Saturday or on Sunday, excuse me, and Brian Evans and Harris Muyazinovic. Muyazinovic moves into the starting lineup for Andre Patterson. And those are the Papa John's starting lineups. It's game time. Papa John's is the perfect call. Papa John's pizza, better ingredients, and bean. And Bob Knight has a special presentation. He's asking for some room here, and he's going to present Lou Henson with a uh, chair. Let's go down to Coach Knight. For 21 years, our teams have played each other. And I think that uh, during those 21 years, the players on both teams have shown what college basketball, the very best of college basketball. Uh, there's never, there's, there's never been an incident with players in any one of our games. Uh, they've been really, really hard-fought games. You've won some, we've won some. What we'd like to give you is just a little remembrance of the competition that we've had back and forth between our two institutions. You'll see this chair like I would as a coach with Indiana on it, and I know that you'll remember different games than I will when you look at this chair. But you have been, you have been a tremendous part of Big Ten basketball, and there has not been, Lou, over 21 years, a team that's been tougher for us to play against year after year than your team has been, whether it be here or in Champaign. And on the, on the back of this chair, there will be a plate that simply says, to Lou Henson, an excellent coach, a tough opponent, best wishes from Indiana basketball. And we haven't agreed on everything over the years, but I'm going to miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is this really the Bob Knight that I know? 
I'll tell you one thing. I've always respected him as an outstanding coach, but I've, and I've always, I've never questioned his judgment. But today I question his judgment. Why would he get me a chair? I haven't used one in 55 years. I don't plan to start now. No, I want to expre express my appreciation to uh, Coach Knight and the staff and uh, everybody who is responsible. Let me say this about the fans at Indiana. I've been on radio and TV, and I've said it from time to time about the great fans here, but I haven't told you personally. And let me say this, if there are better uh, contingent of fans than what you have here in Indiana, I don't know where they are. And you know something else that we found out? Not only are you great fans, you're the kind of fans that every coach likes. We've never had a problem with the fans in here. As a matter of fact, Coach, I can't remember them even mentioning the Ludo here. <laughs> and that's more than I can say about Dick Vitale also. <laughs> no, thank you very much for everything. I hope we have a great game. And there you see a great presentation by Coach Bob Knight to Lou Henson. And, of course, Henson, the 12th all-time winningest coach in NCAA history. 662 career victories in his 34th and last year as a coach. There it is, 21 at Illinois. He's the third all-time leading Big Ten career victory leader at 213. And he won that co-championship back in 84. Coach Knight awarded Judd Heathcote with a chair in his last game here at Assembly Hall, which was last year, and a surprise as Lou Henson announced his retirement in the last game against Iowa. So we're ready for basketball now. Very inspiring talk by both coaches. The last meeting was January 13th. Indiana won by 14. Garris was not in that ball game, and he should make quite a difference. We're ready to go. Indiana leads the overall series as well as they do here in Bloomington. Our officials tonight, Jody Sylvester, Gene Mangi, and Art McDonald. First tap goes awry. And Jody Sylvester tries it again. Indiana controls easily. Neil Reed with the ball. You can see Indiana starts a very big, strong lineup inside. You got Mujuzinovic inside along with Todd Lindemann. Look for Mujuzinovic to do some feeding inside to Todd Lindemann as Brian Evans steps out and hits the first shot of the game. Indiana needs his leadership, and he does it with performance, his first three-pointer of the night. And here's Garris, 22. Watch him as he controls this Illinois offense. He's just a guy that creates a lot of problems for Indiana. You can see Indiana going to do some switching out front. You can see Charlie Miller starts on him. That's Jerry G, 6'8", sophomore out of Chicago. It's the first jumper on the pass from Nortry. See, they put a little pressure up court, but they're really not a team that's going to press you a lot more of a half-court type of defensive team. Very similar to the Indiana team. Miller on the drive against a much smaller Hellman. Here's Lindemann inside. That's what he does best. Turns quickly to shoot. Evans with a chance for that rebound. Richard Keen going to get the slap right there. Nobody got a body on Brian Evans, and it's Richard Keen not guarding Brian Evans. He goes up for the basketball and slaps Brian Evans. Good job by Lindemann, just turning and shooting. Even though he misses a shot, you can see nobody gets a body right there. Brian Evans slapped across the arm. He'll get two. Evans has been hot from the line, 37 of his last 41. That's 90 percent. He ranks number three in the Big Ten. 84 percent for the year. And he's got Indiana's first five points. Hoosiers lead by three. Garris will bring the ball up uh, every time for the Illini. He's going to have the ball in his hands a majority of the time, and then they've got, got Heldman out, outside that three-point line, and Richard Keene, a guy that you have to make put the ball on the floor. You don't want him to just let him catch and shoot. Garris, here's the dump off to G. The left-handing floater is good. He puts a nice arch on that one. 5-4, Indiana. Jerry, Jerry G's been able to score two baskets because of penetration. He slides out to the, the baseline, and he's got a little easy jump shot. One of our keys to the game. Stop that penetration by Illinois. Here's Reed. Lindemann inside again, spins to the right, and the off-balance shot goes in. I think that's very important for Todd Lindemann. Get off to a good start. Feel comfortable inside. He's got two good shots. He's got one or two to fall. He can continue to get those shots. 
create a lot of problems for Illinois inside. He made six three pointers and so he'll be looking for that shot again tonight. You can see that, that they do a lot of screening on the ball which makes it very very difficult. Indiana will have to do a lot of a lot of switching. Matt Hellman outside with the jumper is off. He's been hot from the three point line lately. Illinois comes up with it. That's what you want Garris to do. You want him taking that shot because as you see them go over the back. But Garris, you'd much rather him shoot the, shoot the three pointer than give him a little fake and get inside. He creates a lot of problems when he does the other. Nortry picks up the foul. His first. Illinois with some full court pressure. They know Indiana a bigger team. They're going to try to take advantage of it with some full court pressure. Indiana by three. Richard Keene is the guy looking for Indiana to go at. He's not a guy that can really handle Evans inside. He's not big enough as Evans takes the three. He drains it again. Looks like he's found his eye tonight. Three for three from the field for Evans, his eighth point. Garris with the called play, a 1-4 offense. Gives Garris room to penetrate inside the middle. You can see that's what Keene likes to do right there, catch and shoot. Keene's a guy that you you don't want getting off to a quick start because he's a very streaky player. Evans way outside for this three. Falls up short. Move Zinovich on the board. Back out. Travel. Reeds move that pivot foot. Trying to get around the defense. First turnover for Indiana. Neil you know, Reed's got to pick his game up just a little bit for Indiana. He's been a little bit non-existent for Indiana about the last four games. Neil Reed, very, very important to this Indiana team. He needs to hit some jump shots and get them started offensively. Indiana does not substitute much. Evans has gone 40 minutes in five of the last seven games. And Miller and Reed will be at 37 minutes or more. Here's G inside. A little surprised that Charlie Miller is going back in and double teaming. Five seconds on the shot clock. Garris floats a three. It's off. Good defense that time by Indiana. Good job by Evans of taking the ball off the board and getting down before they can set up in Indiana. Should have been a goaltend right there. The Illinois player got his hand in the net. While the ball was on the rim. While the no ball was on the rim. That should be a goaltend. Take a look at it. Evans, nice job taking the ball inside. Now, Muzinovic is going to take it up. Now, right there, that's got to be a goaltend. The ball's up on the board. It's on the rim. Should be a goaltend. 45, Chris Gandy checks in for Illinois, 6'9", junior. Goes 207, so he's not, uh, doesn't have the weight to deal with Indiana. He is Illinois' biggest player, though. Kind of a streaky player. They say if he gets off to first two or three shots successfully, then he's awfully good. Miller with the rebound. And Indiana, Indiana has another possession. Indiana's height really paid off there. Heldman, really a pretty good job of blocking out. He's just not big enough. Charlie Miller up over the top of him. Reverse dribble behind the back by Reed. Lindemann's open inside. Jump hook is good. Good pass by Mojazinovic to find the putty Lindemann. A nice job of Lindemann to gather himself and then go up strong for the little jump hook. Lindemann now with four. So a good early start coming off a fine performance against Purdue. Garris now inside with Neil Reed. Keen off the dribble. Tough shot. Garris comes away. That shot fake by Gandy left him wide open from 12 feet. All their open shots are coming from right there. Penetrate. Guy slides out to the baseline. I know I've said it about the third time, but that's you've got to stop the penetration and look for the dish. Lindemann again open inside, towers over the Illini. That's all he needs to do is just catch about a half a turn, and, and he's going to be within five feet of the basket. I mean, I know it sounds awful simple, but uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scored a heck of a lot of points doing nothing else. Keen outside, so Garris moves inside some. This time sets the screen that gets G open. Gandy has it, but then loses it. Good rebound by Gandy, not able to come up with it. Very active on the boards, even though they're not real big. Reed drives inside and hits a running shot. 16 to 6. It's Indiana's biggest lead by 10. Keen showing some good quickness and he gets around Evans that time. Indiana 
doing a nice job defensively, really helping out once they do find an opening. Hellman dribbles it right back outside the three-point line and nails the long jumper. He's a good shooter. He looks a little bit unorthodox, almost leaning back, but that's his normal shot. He can knock that down without anybody on him. He's going to knock it down about half the time. His first three cuts the lead to seven. What a pick by Muye Zinovich as Hellman goes down. Evans back to the basket. Good defense that time by Gandy. This is where they're they're awful tough right there. You can see Heldman just goes out outside the three-point line. He knows Garris will find him if he's open. He missed that shot. Again, lean back, but that is his normal shot. Evans for three is off. Lindsay's missing her a little bit short. Both of the ones from out front were right on target, except they're just coming up a little bit short. Carry Garris. Garris did carry that. You don't see that call much. Second turnover. We've got timeout. It's Indiana by seven. Lou Henson ponders his next move. First and keeping his feet could have easily went down. Watch how he gathers himself and then goes up strong. In the past, we've seen him catch that, go up kind of unorthodox. There, he really gathered himself. He went up strong, and that's why he's had good games tonight and against Purdue on Sunday. 21 points, so his confidence remains from that big game. Indiana by seven. Most importantly, he looks comfortable out on the floor. He's not hurrying things. You can see he makes a nice, solid cut. He's not in a hurry. He's doing things because he's confident. Confidence does so much for you, no matter what type of thing you're doing. I saw Illinois one of six from three-point land. That was the big reason they were able to defeat Iowa on Saturday. Look for them to continue shooting, as we mentioned in the open. They, they were they 14 of 34 from the three-point line, which is a, is a pretty good percentage from that far out. Harris tries to set the offense. Charlie Miller trying to keep him out of the lane. He stops for a jumper outside, and that's exactly where he can beat you, drive it inside or hit the jumper out. But you, I think Indiana still, that's where they want to see him take that shot. If he hits four or five of those, then, you, then you're going to have to make an adjustment. But his deep penetration is what really hurts people. 18-11, Indiana by seven. Patterson in the game for the first time for Indiana. You can see they're having a real problem inside trying to guard Lindemann. Nortry slapped that one away. It's a bad pass by Andre Patterson. No pass there. Good defense by Illinois. Brian Blackwell comes away with that steal. He's in the game for the first time. Second Indiana turnover. Matchup there is Charlie Miller at 6-7 on Garris at 6-2. And that foul goes against Andre Patterson. No, it's on Gandy, I think. On Gandy. Another timeout, 18-11. Indiana leads it by seven. Tonight's Big Ten game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated and a use rebroadcast or the transmission of any or all of this game without express written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. And we welcome all our viewers who are watching us on Direct TV. Good start by Indiana. Again, Illinois goes to the full court pressure. Double team. There's your field goals, five of 13 for travel on Andre Patterson. Illinois, and Patterson's turnover makes it Indiana's third. Andre Patterson has got to pick his game up. In the last four games, Andre Patterson has had 22 points and 17 fouls. Uh, that's just not very good for a kid who, to start the Big Ten season, really was playing well for Indiana. 44 is Ryan Blackwell, 6'8", freshman. Indiana's defense so far kept Garris out of the middle. He misses on that outside jumper. Patterson has the board. And again, another quick foul on Gandy. So that's two in a row for him. Picks up his second after only being in the game a short time. Illinois really can't afford for their big people, or what you would call their big people, only at 6'8 to get in foul trouble. You see they bring Jerry G back in, number 32. He's 6'8 at 230, so Gandy an inch taller. Here's the long pass, easily stolen that time by Brian Johnson. So an inadvertent pass by Miller, Indiana's fourth turnover. If you miss on that pass, you gotta miss long, you can't miss short. Tip that time by Blackwell. Tell you, Illinois is holding its own under the boards early here. Lindemann's got it and dribbles out of trouble. 
Good job by only taking one dribble. He did clear himself and makes it very difficult for him to trap you then. Reverse layup. Evans missed that one. Thought he was foul. It's a fast break for the Illini. Well, this is, see, the little shot fake, that's where he hurts you. Even though they didn't get the shot that time, that's what they're looking to get. And Garris a little upset that Johnson didn't take that shot. He got the ball in a position to go ahead and get a good 15-footer uh, on the baseline. Indiana goes, it looks like, to a zone on the out-of-bounds play. And they stay in a 2-3. Hellman open is short. He does lean back quite a bit. That really one really leans comes back up short. A terrible awesome. passing angle by Neil Reed. There's just no angle there to make that pass. Fifth turnover by Indiana. Illinois, very good, by the way, at forcing turnovers. They force four more than they commit themselves. And in fact, in the last seven games. They've only committed eight turnovers per game, so Illinois does not give it up much. But they force it quite a bit. Here's shot by Johnson is off. Indiana scored 16 points in about the first five minutes, and they've scored two in about the last five minutes. So they, they, they need to go what, what got them there, and that's continuing to take it inside to Todd Little, but there's just not anybody inside that for Illinois has been able to handle him so far. Here's Evans trying to post up. The ball deflected out of bounds. Evans touched it last. Another turnover. By Indiana, Richard Keene checks back in for Hellman. And while Illinois' defense is awful good, that is three really bad passes by Indiana offensively. I mean, the defense really hasn't made them turn the ball over. Indiana's just thrown bad passes. You see Indiana's turned it over six times already. 9.46 left, Indiana by seven. That's 18 and 11 for quite a while now. Whistle inside. Poor communication by Indiana. You can see they're setting the back screen, and then G's going to cut off of it going to the basket. Whoever guy is setting that screen, you have got to get up there and let your guy know that that back screen's coming so you don't run over somebody. First on Lindemann. Indiana does not substitute a lot, so they've got to watch that foul trouble. It's hurt them in games they've lost here in the Big Ten season. That's Brian Johnson, only one point a game average. Hits a uh, jumper there for his first two. And Illinois climbs back in. They're only down five. Lindemann trying to post on G. Very surprised that Indiana continues to run a lot of people. Good job by Andre Patterson. They're getting the short little jump hook. But the guards are running down through the middle, and they really kind of clog things up inside. I'm surprised they just don't put Patterson on one side, Lindemann on the other, and just run the other three guys outside. Keen on a drive, blocked by Miller, but got him with the body. Keen showing some good quickness there. Miller tried to stay with him, and Keen got the layup. Let's take a look. You can see good, good first quick step right there, and you can see he blocks the shot. Looks like a pretty good block right there, Charlie Miller. A little upset that they called the foul. Referee said they got him on the side of the head. Mouye Zinovich checks in for Lindemann, and Chris Rolls comes in for Neil Reed. Rolls is a, a uh, sophomore, 6'1", 182. I think the one thing that makes Keene look a little quicker than maybe he really is is that most teams know he's a guy that likes to catch and shoot. So defensively, you really want to play up on him and make him put the ball on the floor. Indiana doing that tonight, but then they're not able to get back defensively. Richard Keene reading it deep, or offensively, getting to the basket. Basket making it very difficult for Indiana to, to defend. At 19, and again, a sophomore in Illinois' win against Indiana. At 16 as a junior, so he likes to play against Indiana. Evans breaks the press, gets around Johnson. Nearly stolen from behind, and a slap foul is called on Johnson. Well, Indiana, only two team fouls. That is the sixth team foul now on Illinois. Take a look at Evans. He puts it through his legs there. Keene almost knocks it away. They slap him right there. They get him with a foul. Chris Rawls in that situation has got to go get that basketball. He's the guy in there to handle the basketball. When Neil Reed's not in there, Miller goes back to Rolls. It's Evans and Louie Zinovich trying to post up inside. Here's Miller on the drive. Offensive foul as two uh, Illinois people there to 
set up for the charge. That's Miller's second foul. Charlie Miller has to, has to realize and has to know after playing basketball this long, when it takes you that long to get where you're going, there's going to be people waiting for you down there. That's when you have to go go down to that corner right there, right there where the, uh, the foul line kind of is, and you just go straight up and take a little five-foot jump shot. You can't continue on to the basket. Good teams are going to be there to take the charge. Indiana by five. Rolls now draws the assignment on Garris. Garris is interesting when you watch him. Nortree, another guy, a guy very similar to Kwan Garris, really improved his shooting. Another guy that gives Indiana a lot of problems. Three-pointer, he went over Patterson there. Nortree 6'4", against a much taller Patterson, hit the jumper outside. And it's a two-point ball game. Louie Zinovich gets it up. It's a scrappy Illinois defense. Here's a 9-2 run by Illinois. Mouye Zinovich blocked from behind by Blackwell. Somebody got to pick him up. This is where he's going to kill you. He goes coast to coast. The ball slapped away off of Garris's leg. 20-18, and the game is tightening up. Right out here in front of somebody, and boom, they're waiting for it. That's where you got to really take it up strong. You have to think that there's somebody behind you wait, waiting to block it. Either a little pump fake to get them off balance, or you really got to take it up strong and make them foul you. Instead, Illinois knocks that shot away. There's some interesting numbers. Look at when these teams score more than 80 points, how good their records are. But when they don't reach that 70 mark, neither team has been able to win the game. That does not mean, though, if neither team scores 70, it'd be a tie game. <laughs> He'd go to overtime. <laughs> Sometimes you can't read too much into those numbers. But here's some numbers. 12 to 4 now is the run by Illinois. It was 16 to 6. And now they've drawn within two. Look at that last play, the elbow. And the foul on Mouye Zinovich gives Illinois the ball. Well, I mean, those elbows got to go someplace. When you're six foot nine, you got a six foot four guard in you. Six foot four guard, guard guarding you. Uh, but you do have to watch your elbows inside. You don't want to hit somebody in the face with them. There's Keen outside for three. He shoots that high archer. Rainbow. And this one hits. And it's Illinois by one. Five now for Richard Keen. Indiana crowd. Trying to pick their team up. Evans has been quiet after that initial great start. Indiana has got to take the ball inside to Bujazina, but you got to give it to him right there. See that? There's no way that the Nortry can handle him inside. No way. 6'4", 200 is Bryant Nortry. There's a good look at Bryant. He's given up almost 60 pounds. And even though you don't get the basket, you, as you take a look at the three-pointer, this is what Keene does so well. He likes to feed inside, then spot up. And right there he is. He's firing that rainbow from way out there. Even though you don't score the two points, you get them in foul problems and you get to go to the free throw line. The team that gets to the free throw line the most tonight will probably be the team that wins the basketball game. Patterson comes out. Lindemann comes in for him. It moves Mouye Zinovich to the line. He struggled early from the free throw line. But Lately's come back up. His first 13 games, he was only 44% from the line. But these last 13, he's at 60. Brian Johnson checks back in for Nortree. Illinois goes to their bench a lot. You won't see Indiana using as much as they've only had two subs come in. Free throw is good. So Indiana climbs back in front with the one point lead. See a different lineup with Chris Rawls right there. They're going to get him, get him for that reach in. The one thing that, the, that Indiana coaches will always teach is to get those hands down and bring the hands up. When you have the hands up and you slap down, you're always, or a majority of the time you're going to get the foul. Because even if you don't foul, it looks like a foul. you got to get those hands down and bring them up at the basketball, try to knock it away. Keen on the drive and stops for the jumper. Another offensive rebound by Illinois. Richard Keen feels like he can take Neil Reed. You watch him. When he gets the basketball, Neil Reed or Chris Rawls is on him. You will see him either try to post down inside or he's going to try to take them to the basket and use his height advantage. Indiana is switching man-to-man -man defense now. Here's Hellman inside. Tough pass to catch. Turnover. Indiana fast break. Oh, Milosinovic was right there open if Brian Evans would have looked down low. Evans open. Bingo. Oh. Three-pointer is off. Keen has it. He 
goes inside. G off bounce, but uses the glass. Tough catch right there. It's a tough pass, tough catch, and he puts it off the glass. Six now for Sam G. Sorry, Jerry G. Sam G, a former great player at Indiana. Illinois takes the first lead at 23-22. Three-pointer outside, Neil Reed. He gets that rainbow to fall. Very important for Indiana. Even if he only scores 10 or 12 points a game, they're very, very important. All of a sudden, that's one more guy that Illinois has got to worry about, and it opens up things for Indiana inside. Indiana by two, so the offense is for both teams. Coming back, good block out by Lindemann. But the ball hit the floor, and Illinois picks it up. Hellman a three. And that one off. He struck it on the outside. Fast break. Oh, it's terrible pass. Tough pass there. Stolen by Keen. A little sloppy on the play. Another foul on Indiana. That pass has no chance of getting through. You've got to take that farther, make the defense pick you up. If they don't pick you up, you've got to take it to the basket or you've got to bring it back out. You can see Richard Keene is caught up by this time. There's no way that, that basketball is going to get through. Very poor decision by Chris Rawls right there on the pass. And once again, it turns in Indiana fouls. It turns out, or it turns into another turnover for Indiana, who's handled the ball very poorly here early in the game. Nine first half turnovers. Just under five minutes left, first half. Still, Indiana has the two point lead. Harris hasn't really caught on track yet, though, for Illinois. You gotta watch him. He kind of rocks you to sleep. All of a sudden, you just go right around you. Blackwell goes hard to the back, hard to the basket. Todd Lindemann doing a nice job taking charges. You remember in the Penn State game, he took three charges. Just because you're seven foot, you don't have to block shots. If you get in position, let people run over you. It means the same thing. It means a turnover. And good job by Todd Lindemann positioning himself. Indiana got the ball going the other way. Rolls and Reed are the guards for Indiana. Lindemann at center. Evans and Muge Zinovich also inside. This time Evans nails the three. You can see that he's going to put Lindemann and Evans on one side or Muge Zinovich and Evans. Evans is going to pop out. They're either going to have to guard Evans or they're going to be in trouble inside. Trying to guard the big man down on the post. Here's Garris outside. It's a good pick from G. And he nails that jumper going to his left just on the three-point line. So a two-point hoop for Garris. You can see he's really looking more for the jump shot tonight than he has been in the past. He's a guy that really looked more for the drive. Evans looking for that shot, gives it to Rolls. That's got to be a foul right there. I mean, Jer Jerry G just knocks, knocks him down. That is out is called. 28-25. It's Indiana by three. And the crowd not happy with that last call. Let's take a look now at our finish line first half replay of the game. Brought to you by Finish Line. And a big, big play it was as Brian Evans steps out on the same side as Todd Lindemann. They've got to come out and guard him. He buries it for a three-pointer and it gives Indiana a three-point lead. 11 now for Evans first half on three of 10. So he struggled from the field, but he's got to keep putting it up for Indiana. Shot clock's down to 10. Nearly stolen and a foul. That one goes on Jerry G is first. And that is the 10th team foul now on Illinois, so Indiana will go to the line. Right there, Todd Lindemann's got to do a better job. He's got to hold for one second longer. Jerry G upset with the call right there, but it looks like he grabbed Neil Reed a little bit right there in front of the official. But Todd Lindemann has got to hold, I mean, just for a fraction of a second, if he'll hold, he can get that. Bojazinovich, good rebound, but he can't get the layup. That was the ninth foul by Illinois, so the one and one, Reed missed it. And Illinois comes away with it. Here's Garris off the dribble. Keen faked the shot. Rolls on Lindemann now. And here's a post up by Blackwell. Rolls did a nice job deflecting it away. Seven turnovers for Illinois. So Indiana's defense has pressured them into a lot more than they're used to. A foul is called away from the ball on Johnson. He's trying to stay with Evans, and it's a quite a task. You can see he really doesn't foul him much right here. Brian Evans is a, is a smart player. He's a senior. And uh, 
Johnson's wondering, who the heck did they call that one on? I, I didn't foul him, and I don't think he did foul him inside. But uh, Brian Evans, as a senior, he, he realizes he can get a few calls like that. He knows people are going to be hanging on him, and when they did, he flopped and he got the call. Patterson checks back in. Some other categories. Evans doing well in the Big Ten. That's why he's our pick for the Big Ten most valuable player. Well, he's just done everything for this Indiana team. I can't imagine this team without him on there. Not only great leadership, he hits a lot of big shots. He hits the jump shots. He shoots the free throws. He gets the rebounds. I mean, he's uh, averaging almost double figures in rebounds. He's just been a tremendous player all year for Indiana. Inside to Johnson for the easy layup. Four now for Johnson. Indiana down quickly. Patterson matches it with his jump hook. Good job by Chris Rawls to find Andre Patterson. Andre Patterson ought to get one or two of those baskets per game just because with his athletic ability and his speed, he can beat other teams up and down the floor. Garris on the baseline. Goes right up for the three. Was short. Illinois not a tall team, but they are fighting for every rebound. Indiana comes away with it. Patterson tries to post up against the smaller Blackwell. Lindemann does as well against G. Boy, triple team there. Spins baseline and gets the jumper. Lindemann having another good game. That's 10 first half points. And again, excellent job of gathering himself. G really gave him a hard knee, kind of knocked him off balance, but he gathered himself, went up strong, almost took it as a challenge once he got bumped there by G, and he came back awfully strong. Blackwell drive to the hoop, blocked by Lindemann, out of bounds. But this crowd responds to the block shot. That bump by Jerry G might have done more than Illinois realizes. It's really brought Todd Lindemann to life. He makes an excellent block right here. He stays away from the man, reacts excellent to the shot. Neil Reed trying to take the charge. Illinois is still going to have the ball. 17 on the shot clock. Keen brings it in. And this crowd starts the chant. Let's go Hoosiers. There's shot clock lower left. Keen sees it and he goes to Garris. And his jumper is good on a good down screen that time by Gandy. Indiana by five, minute 15 left, first half. Neil Reed outside for three. Second three pointer by Reed, give him eight on the game. Indiana now stretches that lead to eight points. Indiana very difficult to play when they got the inside and the outside going. You can see Todd Lindemann playing well inside. Neil Reed, that's his second three-pointer of the game. G inside, the jumper is good, and he drew the foul. Goes to the line. But scoring points has not been Indiana's problem. I mean, you think back to the Purdue game, Indiana, I think, had almost 40 points at halftime. So we take a look at the replay. Good job by Jerry G, not only getting position inside, but then going, going up very, very strong. He's only six foot eight. Ochai does a nice job shielding his body, going up strong, getting the foul, and getting the basket. Blackwell checks in. Patterson comes out for Indiana. Richard Mandeville in for the first time. As I mentioned, scoring points not the problem for Indiana. It's defending. Uh, they gave up, I think, almost 44, 45 points against Purdue in the first half. And uh, while Purdue's an awfully good team, they're not a real high-powered offensive team, a team that's going to score 80 or 90 points a game on them. Indiana leads the conference in scoring, 76 a game. Free throws missed. Johnson comes away with it. He'll hit that one. Hellman off on that one, and Lindemann with the board. Indiana, when they lead at the half, is 15 and 1 this year, and when they trail in Big Ten games at the half, is 0 and 6. So this halftime lead that Indiana will take in the locker room very important for their confidence. 25 seconds left. I think Neil Reed's aware of that fact. Maybe, six, maybe we ought to call timeout and talk to him about six holding the difference ball for the last shot. On the shot clock, a jumper is off. Illinois does have chance for the last shot. Hellman looks up at the clock. Goes to Keene, that's a three. He missed it, and Mandel there with the board. Two seconds. Oh, Off the backboard by Rolls. Had a chance. And we are at the half. Indiana leads it by six, 
Bob Knight takes his team to the locker room. We'll see what they do. Getting to the free throw line, a real key for either team. Whatever team gets there the most, I feel like, scores. Patterson only four points, and he's got to get going for Indiana. Yeah, but you see Brian Evans leading the way, and Brian Evans only three of ten from the field, but all three were three-pointers. So look for Brian Evans to try to establish himself inside a little bit more for Indiana, not only from the three-point line. Here you see Hellman. He was only one of seven from three-point land. A 40 percent of shooters, so exactly. expect better things out of him this half. Here's Nortry inside, and the tip that time by Jerry G gives Illinois the first bucket of the second half. So it looks like Illinois going to try to go back down inside. Even though they don't have the height, they feel like they've got the quickness, can probably draw some fouls inside. Charlie Miller open for three. That one off, rebound to Garris. Even though it's off, it's important because Charlie Miller played 12 minutes in the first half, didn't even find a shot out there. Didn't find a three-pointer or two-pointer or anything else as Jerry G goes to the board. Second rebound for G and second putback, giving 12 points on the game. And it's Indiana by two. Foul called on Heldman as Miller brought the ball up. See, Heldman knew, knew he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar right there. He off balance a little bit. He kind of leaned over, tried to knock the ball away, knock Charlie Miller to the floor. Neil Reed comes out with a heavily bandaged left calf area. Here's Lindemann inside, goes up strong, layup just off. As he floated to the right, that ball came off the right side of the rim. Look at Hart's aggressive move inside, though. G air balls, but another offensive rebound. Blocked that time by Patterson. Indiana, it's three on three. Stop and go by Neil Reed. Oh, Picked his pocket, pick. Harris did. Three on one. Behind the back, and Nortry laid it in. Kiwan Garris showed you something there. And he did pick his pocket. Neil Reed had to step on him, go into the basket. Kiwan picked his pocket, took it the other way, and when he's leading a three-on-one break, they're going to score about 95% of the time. Three quick baskets by the Illini. Tie score. Evans answers with a three-pointer outside. That's why we've been talking about Brian Evans, MVP. Right there, Indiana comes out. Illinois outscores them 6-0 to start the second half. Indiana needs a shot in the arm, and they got it for Brian Evans. 16 points now for Evans. And Evans picks up the foul. He drew the assignment on Keene, trying to prevent that pass from coming in. That's what happens when you lunge on defense. Usually good things don't happen when you're lunging. you got to stay down in a defensive stance, move those feet. Pass inside to G. He tries to take Lindemann. And it's off. G got poked, it looks like, in the face. Yeah, he got popped in the nose right there. Garris with a steal, reached high for that pass. Keen for three. And goes over the top of the board, and G's going to have to come out. He got popped, looks like, right in the mouth. And he comes over to the Illinois bench. Gandy comes in for him. Boy, that hurts, too, when you get popped right there on the end of the nose. Checking for blood. We'd have to come out of the game for that. There he is on the Illinois bench with the trainer. Full court pressure by Illinois. I'm sure that, you know, Illinois, not a team that likes to press. Brian Evans calls timeout right there. Good, smart timeout. Uses the 22nd. Illinois, not a team that likes to press a lot. But, but the reason they're doing that, they, they realize, as, as Laz and I have mentioned, there's just nobody for Indiana to put, put in there. All of Indiana's starters are playing almost 40 minutes a game, and the more they can make them work, even bringing that ball up the floor, it makes them more tired as the game goes on, and it really wears them down. I hate to use a timeout. It's the 22nd, though, and Evans at least gets 10 more seconds to bring the ball up to cross the line. 29 seconds left on the shot clock. Let's watch if we can pick up where G gets hit. You can see Lindemann reaches and bang right there. Nose in the way and that hurts. There he is still on the Illini bench. Here's Evans as he brings it up to Miller. Ball stripped away by Hellman that time. And Notre comes away with it. Indiana had nine turnovers at half. That's a third of this half. That makes 12. Gandy outside. His jumper is good. So Illinois found the range here. Second half. Not only they found the range, but Indiana can't handle the basketball. Indiana, Indiana by one. Illinois had about five shots at the basket this half. Indiana maybe one. 
Patterson posting inside. Hard to score when you don't get shots. Miller on the drive, goes up over Hellman. And Notre comes away with that one. Miller went down, no call. Charlie Miller's got to go up stronger. Heldman, he's still having trouble from that three. That ball tapped out of bounds off the uh, side of the backboard by Patterson, so Illinois gets a new possession. You could hit, they hit the side of the support, not just the side of the bank board, so people wondering at home, they, Patterson actually slapped the ball into the side of it. Garris gets it inside, layup won't go. He's just weaving in there and got that ball, got the shot away. Indiana falls asleep on the out of bounds, but there's no way that you can let him get the basketball inside like this. And then once he, so you can see they, they, they fall asleep. There's no way you can let him throw the ball in there. And then he just does an excellent job of using his body. Nobody really fouls him hard, but 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 they did get a body into him. Kiwan Garris will have a chance to shoot two free throws. Third on Lindemann, we had mentioned Indiana had three players with two fouls. And now Lindemann picks his third up. Just over four minutes into this second half. Just good aggressive play out of the locker room by Illinois. They made some good adjustments in the starting the second half, and Indiana just not able to handle the basketball. There you see Garris about ready to pass Doug Altenberger, who is Illinois' color commentator. Of course, we mentioned when Evans passed you, only fair that Garris get a nod when he goes by their color guy, too, on Ted. <laughs> Doug Altenberger was a great player for Illinois and a great guy. Did the visit with him before the game. It's a one-point lead now for Illinois. And again, they go to full court pressure. Evans, Indiana's point man to bring the ball up. But Indiana's got to go into Lindemann right here. This is something Neil Reed's got to see. They've got to go into him. he got to get the ball to him. And Lindemann working hard in that post. Keen trying to front him. Here's the lob pass. And it goes out of bounds. Another turnover, 13 now for Indiana. And I think you're right, Ted. A lot of these turnovers have not been forced by Illinois. A lot of them are just passes out of bounds. Just bad passes. Indiana started the game where they where they threw it away. You can see Indiana with nine in the first four already. And we've only played three and a half minutes here in the second half. Nortry spins. Gandy gets bumped. Slapped out of bounds by Indiana. Todd Lindeman and Indiana very fortunate he didn't pick up his fourth foul. He fell off balance. Almost knocked Gandy out of bounds. This is a classic duel between quickness and size. And Illinois is trying to use that quickness inside. Indiana counters with the big players. Shot clock is at eight. Oh, great nice pass. Two. Garris gets the layup. This time it was Keen with the assist. Illinois leads by three. Ten points for Garris. Patterson posts up inside, takes it up strong, and there's a jam. Andre Patterson comes to life. Six for Patterson. At least for a little bit, he's come to life. That's the type of play I think everybody's come to expect out of Andre Patterson the last three or four games. We've not, not seen much of it. Kevin Turner gets Keen a shot, is off, and that'll be a foul on Nortry. Reed with good position. Good. Reed with good position, Nortry. Very, very difficult right Time there. out, it's Illinois by one. We'll be back. Forty-two. Take a look at Kawan Garris. Nice job, great pass, good cut. That's the type of things you like to see on offense. Illinois come out of the locker room and they've really come to life. Let's take a look at Andre Patterson. I said this is the type of thing we've come to expect. Not seen much of it lately, but he's a guy that you given given the opportunity, he can do a lot with it down there on the post. There you see Garris, uh, Garrison Keene, 15 for that backcourt. I don't know exactly how Indiana got away with that right there. It looked like Charlie Miller was almost out of bounds. He touched the official who was staying out of bounds to gather his, gather his momentum, but uh, off we go to the other end. Patterson low inside. Layup in and out. Good move, though, on the baseline. One thing you mentioned in, in, during the break is how Kawan Garris looks so confident when he does get the ball that, as though he can take it any time. Boy, tough shot there as he floated and missed that one. Illinois came from out of bounds. Gandy to touch the ball, so Indiana gets it. 
It's a hot potato down there. Nobody could get a hold of it. Lindemann showed his size there. He didn't block that shot, but he changed it by Garris for the miss. Here's See, Miller bringing it up. See, that, that, that's really tough on an offensive ball handler right there. Miller ends up right on the Indiana bench, and Garris picks up that foul. Good defense by Kiwan Garris, so you can see Coach Knight up, up, and he, he knew the guy was using his hands, but you can bet if, he, if it was on the other end, Coach Knight would love to see a guy playing defense like that, you know? So uh, Indiana does get the call as Kiwan Garris using his hands, but Kiwan Garris really making it difficult and really tires a guy out when you got to work that hard to get the ball across the half-court line. Patterson inside, here's Evans trying to get open again, slapped away. Garris comes away with it, foul on Reed in the backcourt. Juwan Garris has changed this game all by himself. The first six minutes of the second half, he's come out of the locker room, he's really taken over offensively and defensively. He's come up with some big plays, made it very difficult on Indiana trying to handle the basketball. The quickness aspect of the game, here's Garris outside. Open for three. And a tip in that time by Johnson. Came out from well beyond the free throw line without a block out, laid it back in. That's why you go to the offensive board every time down. You're probably not going to get many of them, but that opportunity comes up once in a while. And you can see Johnson came up with it right there. Great offensive rebound. Illinois by three. Drive by Evans and forced his way in there for two. Indiana needed a basket. Not found many here in the second half. Not, not been able to even find many shots here in the second half. That's the second big bucket Brian Evans has hit. 18 now for Evans. Keen will come back in for Illinois. 33 is Kevin Turner. 6'2 sophomore. G will take that shot, left-hander. And that's good. Two-pointer. Lindemann backed up a little. And G took that shot. Illinois by three. Lindemann open inside, turns. And a foul inside. They're going to get Johnson, number 34. Oh, they're going to get G. Number 32 is G. Good pass by Brian Evans. He got the ball outside. He Right away, he, he, he almost couldn't get the ball quick enough because he, he knew Lindemann was open trying to get the ball down inside. Todd Lindemann goes up strong and have a chance for two. Keen comes in for Johnson. It'll be interesting to see if Neil Reed makes any type of adjustment down here on the other end. You can see they're coming up and kind of setting that, that wing screen. And uh, Kiwan Garris, or you want, might want to call it the flare type screen, but Kiwan Garris continues to flare out there. It looks like Neil Reed, after a while, would jump to that side and not let him continue down there and not let them screen him. But so far, he's not made that adjustment. Lineman strong on the second. The referee's conferring, and Illinois tapped it out, so Indiana retains possession. Richard Keene, definitely the guy that got his hand on the basketball. Good call by the official right there as he slapped it out of bounds. So Indiana, new possession, new shot clock. Down two. Here's their go-to guy. There's too many people posted on that lane. There's not enough room. Patterson takes it to the hole. And gets the hoop and a foul. Same move he made earlier that didn't go in. He comes right back with it. It's nice to see him getting opportunities. In the, in the past two or three games, he's not even been taking the ball to the basket. With his athletic ability, his quickness, he has got to make moves like this to create openings for not only himself but other people. You can see a good quick move. Nice job down on the baseline using his body. That's how he jumps back, gathers himself, able to go up. Nice job of hanging in the air and gets a three-point play. He hits the free throw to give Indiana the one-point lead. So Indiana coming alive with this lineup in there. Nine points for Patterson. And this may be a lineup that doesn't get much rest for Indiana. Yeah, there's that flare the screen. And you can see, once again, they just, rather than Neil Reed jumping to the side of where Garris wants to go and not let him go in that way, he just continues to let him go that way and then gets knocked off. Rebound by Patterson. Here comes Indiana. Slowed down by Reed. Evans for three. In and out. Gandy with the board. 
Tough pass. This one stolen by Miller. Same pass Indiana tried to make first half. This crowd starting to come to life for Indiana. Oh, good pass. pass. He's got to come up with that. Got to catch that basketball. 48-47, Indiana by one timeout. We'll be right back. It's Indiana by one. Be sure and join us next Saturday on Creative Sports for a Big Ten doubleheader. Action gets underway at 1 p.m. Eastern. The Buckeyes of Ohio State play host to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Then the Nittany Lions of Penn State travel to the local listings. There's Garris. Illinois 12 and 1 when he scores 12 points or more. So how many does he have today? How many has he got, Laz? He's got 10. Uh oh. We better play some defense, not let him score anymore. They're 12 and 1. They're 2 and 4 when he doesn't score 12. So it's been a good barometer for the Illini. A foul inside. This one on Hellman. See, Indiana tries to take advantage of Matt Heldman whenever he's in the basketball game. An excellent shooter for Illinois, but very difficult for him to play on the other end of the floor. He's guarding Miller. Doesn't match up very well with anybody. Garris out of the lineup now for Illinois to get a rest. Long pass out. Man-to-man -man defense by Illinois. Evans trying to get open inside on. Oh, you've got to give it to him down inside when he's open. Reed a three outside when Neil Reed gets time. That is the result. It's his third tonight. 11 for Neil Reed. Garris comes right back in. Lou Henson notices it right away. Indiana now by four. Blackwell dishes back outside. Turner misses and Indiana boards. It's been a game of momentum switching quite a bit. This time Indiana's got the momentum. Lindemann, there's where he wants the ball inside, goes up strong and off. Blackwell comes away with it. You see, he hurries the shot just a little bit in the first half when he was taking just a little bit more time. He was able to get those shots down. Going to call the foul on Charlie Miller. He got switched up on Blackwell down in the post. Blackwell, six foot eight. It's three on Miller. Here's other Big Ten action. Wisconsin now with the second half lead at Iowa. That would be an upset. And Penn State's moved up on Northwestern. And they're holding well that position on second place. UMass over St. Joe's. UConn in a close one. Keene's got it back to action. Notria jump hook, and that one goes. So Illinois not able to take it all the way to the hoop, but they've adjusted by the jump hooks. Notre has seven. Reed gets it across. Indiana, not much going on on the offensive end right here. There's what you got to do. You got to take it right down inside to him. Don't wait until there's people down there. As soon as he frees himself, you got to get the ball inside. Good pass to Andre Patterson. 13 now for Lindemann as he goes over the much smaller Notre. Keen for three outside. What a rainbow that one was. Patterson pulls that one down. Indiana ought to come back down, go right back into Lindemann. They heard that. And get, he gets another two on the jam. It's Indiana by six. Illinois wants a 20-second timeout. So we'll stay here. 9.36 left. And Illinois sees this second half slipping away. Lou Henson called the timeout. It's a great finish by Todd Linden, but the, but the key was Brian Evans getting, getting the ball to him. He realizes there's nobody can handle him. They're out of position. Indiana gets the ball down quickly. Lindemann flushes it through. Take a look at it again. Brian Evans, he realized the mismatch. And he also realizes there's nobody that can handle Lindemann. Indiana has to continue to go down into Lindemann until Illinois makes some type of change to take that away. Mouye Zinovich checks in for Patterson. So Indiana goes with Lindemann, Evans, Mouye Zinovich, Miller, and Reed. If I'm Lindemann right now, I go over to Mouye Zinovich and tell him, now you're a passer. You get out on the wing, get out of the lane, and get out of my way, and you get the ball to me because there's nobody can handle me in here, and I want the ball. Johnson, and he moves on Lindemann. Good pressure by Todd Lindemann. Good defensive positioning right there against a much quicker player.
Luzinovic has got to get out of there. He's got to let Lindemann have the lane. Lindemann guarded by Gandy now, and working hard inside. Neal's Neil, got to find him when he opened himself up right there. Now Evans posts up, spins into the double team. Good pass. Reed, he's got another one. Three pointer by Neal Reed. Great pass by Todd Lindemann. Rather than go up and kind of throw a weak jump shot with two guys on you, excellent job of shows maturity of spinning, finding the open man, and finding the easy three pointer if there is one for Indiana. 14 for Neil Reed. Here's Hellman. Gandy outside, it's off. Illinois missing the shots from the outside. Evans, jumper off. Got to get and back on defense. Gandy pulls that one down. Three on four, Illinois slows it up. Play called by Lou Henson. Eight minutes left, it's Indiana now by nine. First time Lindemann's had double-digit scoring since the first two games that Indiana played. Indiana's on a 14-2 run. Garris. Good pressure by Neil Reed. Johnson has the board. This is Nortry outside, and his three is good. So Illinois tries to stop that drought. Illinois, not a very big team, but they continue to pound that offensive board. They come up with a lot of second shots here, and that one right there maybe kept them in the game as Notre able to hit an awfully big th three pointer. Oh, yeah, Zinovich inside gets the roll. Good find by Charlie Miller right there. Mo Zinovich, good position inside. Nobody to throw the ball into. You can see Garris has to call timeout. Because the bench thought it was. Uh, after four, but now Illinois has time. We'll be back. In Murray, Utah. Back in Bloomington, where Indiana leads by eight. With seven minutes left here in the second half. Brian Notry sets up behind that three-point line. At this point in time, Illinois down nine. An awful big three-pointer gets them back to within six. They come back down to the other end of the floor. Mojozinovic, excellent job of using his body. And this time, he even finishes it, gets it in the basket. Big play for Indiana. Indiana now by eight, their biggest lead here in the second half. There's your three-point shooting. Illinois likes to take a lot, but really struggling. Ball tapped away. Lindemann comes away with it. Great block, and then look at him go after the basketball. Todd Lindemann been, definitely has been the difference in this basketball game tonight. This Indiana team playing with some fire this last seven or eight minutes. Evans. Lindemann nearly got that pass. G makes a good defensive play. Not a very good pass right there. It's a good, good idea. He's open, but he's got to throw it a little bit higher. He's got to, got to throw it up more up around the basket. Todd Lindemann had the position, would have had an easy two points. Sean Miller's got to get out. They're trying to give Lindemann some room. Here he goes. Reach short. Charlie Miller rebound, laid it right in. Charlie Miller comes up with a lot of baskets inside. He's big for a guard, about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six six. His first two gives Indiana the 10-point lead. This is where you really need to get down and play defense, not let them get an easy basket. Jump ball is called as G was, was forced in right between Lindemann and Muye Zinovich. Jump ball, possession arrow to Indiana. Thank God they got it away from Muye Zinovich until he's going to take the air out of it. He's not ready to pound the air out of the ball. Twisted that left ankle. You see him hobbling up the floor. They've already got Jerry Hester, who's not played at all tonight, one of their, usually one of their starters, with a spray, out with a sprained ankle. Boy, G and Lindemann really battling inside. Lob pass, Lindemann, layup, good, he gets the roll. Good job by Lindemann, good job by Neil Reed of seeing the mismatch. But there's Brian Notry's an excellent player, but he's only six foot four. There's no way he can handle the bigger and much stronger Todd Lindemann. Lou Henson wants another timeout because Indiana's brought the lead to 12. 
left in Bloomington where Indiana's moved out to a 12 point lead. Let's take a look at the mismatch. You can see G inside. He's, a, he's big and strong, but he just doesn't have the height. Nice job of Lindemann continuing to work to get the position. It's tough down inside. You can see now, now we get the mismatch right here with no tree. Indiana recognizes it right away, goes inside. Todd Lindemann, excellent catch, and he's able to finish it off. Recognition so important in the game to see what's there. You have to take what the defense gives you. Gandy on the baseline. Here's Indiana's scoring run. Shot clock down to 10. Mouye Zinovich with the big board. Illinois has gone cold from the outside. No way Gandy can handle Lindemann inside either. Mouye Zinovich needs to get out of there. Now give it to him right there. Lob pass. Foul on the floor before the pass was received. That goes on Gandy. That's his third. I mean, it, it, it's much easier to see from up here than it is as a player, but it's amazing how Brian Evans has figured it out a long time ago before everybody else, and he, he realizes there's no way they can handle Lindemann, and every time he's looking down inside to get him the basketball. Hellman leaves now only three points. So Lindemann, a second good performance in a row, goes to the line. Ball hung on the rim. Evans able to come away with a rebound. As Evans sets the screen now for Lindemann, trying to get him open. Carlin Miller nearly out of bounds. There's a lob. Lindemann spins and gets the roll again. Great movement and footwork by Lindemann. And who got him the basketball? But Brian Evans once again. Comes up on top. Todd Lindemann doing an excellent job in holding his man off and spinning to the middle. And then an excellent ball, excellent finish once he did get the ball in his hand. 19 for Lindemann. Here's Blackwell outside. That one's off. One shot. Indiana rebounds. This game has turned around in the last four minutes. As Indiana's moved up to a 14 point lead. This is where you really kind of back off and make them come out and play defense on you. The clock is. Oh, he got banged right there by Gandy. It was an excellent block by Blackwell from the back, but Gandy came over and banged him pretty good, and Evans will have two. Four now on Gandy, and Evans saw the opening and took it. No sense to pass that one up. G comes back in, still limping slightly. Here's Evans. You see right here, Blackwell blocks the ball, but Gandy from the other side couldn't see it real well from that angle, but he banged him pretty good on body-wise. Evans will get two. It's great to see Todd Lindemann finally coming into his own. I think more than anything, it's just the confidence of realizing once I get the ball down here, I can turn and I can actually score without, without thinking about it. This is the way he's played in practice for the last two or three years, and there's been a lot of high expectations. It's nice to see him finally bring it to the basketball game. Jump ball as Bouye Zinovich scrambled for it. Seven oh, players on the floor. Oh. Illinois gets it on a change of possession. This crowd likes that type of action. Both teams fighting for the ball. There's my boy right there, Bouye Zinovich, down on the floor, cleaning things up. Three on one. He came away with that one. Illinois doesn't surprise me. Brings it up. He brings a lot of excitement to this basketball team, a lot of hard work and enthusiasm. I think that's very, very important for this team. Keane goes to Garris in the corner. That three is off. Illinois shooting percentage going way down here. Second half. As we mentioned, they shot 14 of 34 from the three-point line against Iowa and beat a very good Iowa team. But tonight, not been so fortunate. I don't know what that what it is, but it was like three of 14. In the first half of the three-point line as they get Blackwell on the foul against Evans. Lou Henson off the bench. He sees what Evans is doing out there, and he wants the officials to know he's not happy with that call. I think what Lou's saying is he faked it. Nine team foul, so it's a one and one. 
Brian Evans, as he hits his first three, is uh, very, very big for this Indiana team, especially here tonight. Obviously, he's been that all year for this Indiana team, but this Indiana team is on the verge of letting this Illinois team take them here in this, early in the second half, and Evans made two or three really big shots, kept Indiana in there. Now Indiana started to play much better the last 10 minutes. Evans has his average now, 21 points. Just over three minutes left, and all of a sudden, Indiana up 17 points. Garris gets inside. Illinois misses another shot. Lindemann there. Reed and Miller finally come away with it. Here's Evans going all the way. And he draws another foul, this time on G. And Lou Henson wants timeout again. 2.47 left, and it's starting to slip away. And there's the official. Take a look at the replay. Evans, you can see nobody picking him up. He gets all the way to the basket, and Jerry G pops him pretty good. He'll go to the line for two. It's Indiana by 17. We'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. by 17. Time now for the fourth player of the game. No big surprise. Todd Lindemann, excellent job. Two great games back to back. Look at that nice aggressive move around. Nice touch in the basket. Todd Lindemann really has come into his own the last two games. He's the reason Indiana is going to get a victory here tonight. And our Ford player of the game brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealers. And you mentioned the team that went to the line the most would win, Ted, and you're right on. 12 of 16 now is Indiana. Evans hits another one. The great Swami. Right? <laughs> and he gets two more. So Evans now 23 points as Indiana is going to move to 9 and 6 in Big Ten play. And this sends a real joke to Illinois. They're now 6 and 9, or will be shortly. Scramble for the ball. G picks it up and lays it in. 14 now for G. Illinois is going to have to do some fouling. This is where you want the ball in Neil Reed's hands, Brian Evans' hands. They need to just continue to, to pass it and then go get it. That's a pass you don't want to make inside. And you can see Coach Knight, he's going to tell Charlie Miller, he says, you know, we don't need any more points. We need to run time off the clock is basically what he's telling him. Take a look at the numbers there again. Below 70 points, both of these teams, not very good. Indiana, the first team to 70. I don't think Illinois is going to make it tonight. Andy, jump shot is short. It's a shooting that has hurt him here second half for Illinois. And Indiana's rebounding. Miller brings it up. Double team trying to get rid of it does. This is where this is where Neil Reed and, and Evans need to pass and then go get it. Pass it and then go back and get it. Make them foul you. You're, you're the best free throw shooters. You're the guys that need to have the ball in your hands the entire time. You remember when Steve Alford played, he'd pass and he'd go get it. And other teams hated the fouling because he shot 90% every time he was up there. Reed gets rid of it right away. Lindemann and shot clock expires before Lindemann can get control of that ball. Now that, that, that's a much different situation, Evans throwing it inside, because now the shot clock's down to five. Now we've got to do something with it, where before the shot clock was at 25 when Charlie Miller throws it in there. That's why Coach Knight had the reaction he did to Charlie Miller's pass. Illinois only shot 24% in the first meeting. Tonight, 31% here in the second half, and that's been their downfall. Gandy gets it inside and a foul. This one goes on Evans. Number 34, Brian Evans. The second personal that team spent. So a game that went back and forth for the first 30 minutes has ended up all Indiana here in the last 10. Andy good on that free throw. Illinois is a, a, Illinois, a team that's been very, very tough on Indiana the past few years. This will be the first time Indiana swept them in quite some time. Indiana, in fact, has won nine of the last 11 games in this series. 
So that will be 10 of the last 12 now. Miller has it. And steal that time by Gandy. Nortry outside finally hits a three. Lindemann takes it out of bounds. Looks. And he throws that away. Garris is open. Tip easily in by Gandy as Lindemann came way outside. So it is 10 points. And Illinois finishing with a flurry. Garris picks up that foul, trying to stop Reed from getting the ball. You can score points in a hurry. When the other team throws the basketball away, that's why Kentucky's so, so good at what they do. They, they score a lot of points because they put a lot of pressure on defensively. The other team's not able to handle it. They throw the ball away. Here Kentucky throws, goes down and lays five, it in. Reed. Reed good on that free throw. Indiana never got into foul trouble. That's one thing that has hurt them this year. And they were able to go with pretty much the same group this second half. Muyazinovic steps over the line before Reed lets the free throw go. So that one does not count. And here comes Illinois. 48 seconds to go. Garris lets the ball come all the way to the 10 second line before he picks it up to start the clock. Nortry a three. And that one's good. Indiana's got it again. Here's Evans and the foul. Keene has to foul him. The lead is eight by Indiana. This is almost unbelievable. You can't hardly imagine sitting there watching it with, with a minute 30 to go in the game. Indiana leads by 17. And now with 37 seconds a minute later, they're only up eight. And the lead is eight. Evans will be at the line. Two free throws, number 34, Ryan Evans. That's why Illinois is such a dangerous team. When they hit that three-point shot, it was not going in at all today, and it really got him in a big hole. Evans good. Keith Harris would be smart to stand very, very still. Keen only five tonight after several big games. He's a guy that needs time when he catches the basketball to score. If you put a lot of pressure on him and make him put the ball on the floor, he's not near as effective as he, as he has been when he lay catch and shoot. Nortry off on that one. Garris has it. Goes to Keene. My goodness, that ball goes up off of high, just short. G's got it. Gandy tries the three. 15 seconds left. Illinois still has possession. No. Missed call by the official. It went off of... G. Very good. And so Indiana has it. 14.8 left. Charlie Miller's got it. Back to Reed. And picked up the dribble. Here's Harris. He goes to Charlie Miller. Showtime. Miller scores. 3.9 left. And Indiana holds their own court at home. And the final buzzer, Indiana with a good last 10 minutes, wins at 76-64. The two coaches meet at center court the last time they'll face each other in competition. Bob Knight's team leaves the floor 9-6, and six, and Illinois 6-9. and nine. Each team with three Big Ten games left. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations.